This is a story about a railroad and how it keeps moving throughout the winter over one of the highest and most rugged mountain ranges in the United States. The mountains are California's Sierra Nevada. The railroad, Southern Pacific. This is Southern Pacific's mainline track on its overland route. Over this route and over these mountains, the railroad annually moves approximately 58,000 passenger cars and 495,000 freight cars. This direct rail line to Chicago, the first to span the continent, stands as a tribute to the engineering genius of its pioneer builders. Here the track is clear and the trains are moving easily over the mountain grades. The snow may blanket these mountains, but the tracks are kept open through the efforts of the mountain men of Southern Pacific. Men who meet winter's challenge with equipment ranging from hand shovels to enormous snow moving machines. It is to these railroaders that this picture is dedicated. These are Southern Pacific's four great routes, Shasta, Overland, Golden State, and Sunset. 12,000 miles of railroad carrying modern freight and passenger trains through every type of terrain and climate. Each route is served by one or more of America's newest, fastest streamlined trains. The strategic Overland route provides the most rapid transportation between Chicago and the West Coast. Donner Summit is the railroad's 7,000 foot crest of the Sierra. It was in a 45 mile area around this point that this film was made. These pictures were taken during the winter of 1951 and 52, when the heaviest snowfall in history was recorded in the Sierra. Nowadays, modern technology and snow fighting equipment work to keep the tracks clear of snow, for Southern Pacific has learned how to keep the snow on the run. The pioneer builders of the Overland Route didn't have the advantage of modern snow fighting equipment. Their solution was to put a roof over the railroad where the snowfall was heaviest. These long, barn-like structures effectively kept off the snow, but they limited the visibility of engine men. After years of careful study, and with the advent of modern snow fighting equipment, most of the sheds were removed. A few are still retained where experience has shown that they are needed. The yellow line shows the original extent of the snow sheds, 32 miles within a 40 mile stretch. By 1925, they had decreased to 21 miles. By 1930 to 16. By 1935 to 10. And by 1940 to eight. In 1952, five and one half miles remained. The remaining stretches of snow sheds serve an important purpose. Heavy duty timber sheds protect Donner Summit where helper engines that assist trains up the Sierra grade are removed necessitating short stops here. During that time, heavy snow, drifting with the wind, could get a firm grip on a standing train without the protection of the snow sheds. Because of the experience of Southern Pacific snow fighters, the greatest portion of the railroad needs no overhead covering. It is open to the elements, and the darkening Sierra sky foretells storms in the making. And there were storms aplenty during this worst winter in the history of the Sierra. Here's how they came. October, 31 inches of snow. November, an additional 32 inches. December, three storms totaling 170 inches. January, 245 inches more. February, another 116 inches. March, 160 inches, bringing the season's total to 790 inches of snow, enough to cover a five-story building. It was the heaviest snowfall ever recorded in the Sierra. There is nothing halfway about winter in this area. The blizzards are heavy, the winds strong. The land becomes obscured in the flying white clouds of snow and the mounting drifts. Here is how the railroad looks during a Sierra storm. Southern Pacific strategy is keep the equipment and the snow moving. The only time the equipment stops is to take on water or fuel.
by a locomotive-driven rotary weighing a million and a half pounds, or a hand shovel weighing three and a half pounds. Yes, keep the equipment and the snow moving. And then the wind drops, the sun shines, and another storm has blown itself out. Sierra towns like Truckee come to life as people dig the snow from their doors and clear its crushing weight from the peak roofs of their homes and stores. They know that more snow is coming and they must work quickly to prepare for the next onslaught of winter. The railroad too must take advantage of the time between storms. Track men move out to dig snow away from signals and switches for if they became frozen, trains could not be moved over the track. The pause between storms may be brief, and everyone must work rapidly to get the railroad in shape to meet the challenge of the next blizzard. The entire track distance in the heavy snow area is checked, and instructions are issued to the foreman who directly supervise the track workers. As much snow as possible must be removed during the break. Switches are susceptible to freezing and jamming if heavy snow is allowed to accumulate around them. During the long winter nights and during heavy blizzards, Trackmen stand their posts at the switch points, clearing the snow away and keeping fires burning around them so that they will continue to operate efficiently. Sierra Deep Snow is no respecter of poles, wires, and cables. If communications went out, the mountain dispatcher would have difficulty in directing the movement of trains and snow fighting equipment. In this instance, linemen and signalmen had an especially tough job in keeping the communication system going. Their little track motor cars could not operate, so the men were moved over the railroad on snow fighting equipment. When they reached the area of a break, they dropped off and went trudging through the snow to find it. During the interim between storms, they moved along the railroad, digging out wire and cables that were covered with snow. Never in the experience of these men had their lines been so deeply buried for so many miles. Normally, these troubleshooters work alone, when patrolling the wires. This time, safety demanded that they work in groups to avoid becoming lost in sudden blizzards. These linemen and signalmen are a rugged breed. They do a tough job and ask no quarter from the elements. Remember the snow fighter's rule, keep the equipment and the snow moving? Here's a train that didn't keep moving. A small drift blanketed the track ahead of it, and before the track could be cleared, a blizzard moved in, and the train was held fast until the storm abated. These pictures were taken after all of the train's passengers and crew had been safely removed. Hard-working track men dug the snow from alongside the cars and freed the wheels. Then the railroad's big hook came into play to move the train's diesel power units ahead. Big bulldozers were brought up to give an assist. On the lead bulldozer was Merle Jennings, superintendent of the Sacramento division, an experienced snow general. The big hook pulled again, and with additional power supplied by the bulldozers, the diesel units of the train came free of the snow and were drawn away. Then the cars were released from the snow two or three at a time. In the history of the railroad, this is the only train that ever was snowbound. This is the equipment Southern Pacific uses to keep the snow on the run. Here is a spreader used to push snow away from the tracks. The spreader's nose plow gouges snow and ice from between the rails and along their sides. The nose plow is particularly valuable in plowing out the interior of snow sheds where ice forms between the tracks from water dripping through the shed roofs. The nose plow is also used on sidings. The spreader's massive steel wings 
can be extended outward to a width of 17 feet and can be raised and lowered to any desired position. A roadmaster or general track foreman supervises the spreader operation as it is exacting work. Spreading along this 45 miles of railroad requires thorough knowledge of the territory. Obstructions are many and snow densities change every mile. Spreaders seldom are used when a storm is in progress. During the blizzard, their primary interest is in keeping just the rails themselves from being covered with snow. The break between storms is when the spreader becomes important. It rolls over the railroad, pushing the snow away from the tracks so that during the next storm there will be a place to throw the new snow that falls on the rails. The snow shown here has a high water content, over 40%, making it especially easy to move. Snow fighters call it rubber snow because it holds together so well. The spreader is now moving 500 feet per minute and at every foot is shoving a ton of snow down the mountain. The left-hand wing cuts away the core between the tracks, shoving the snow over for a following rotary plow to throw out. The fireman and engineer on the spreader must combine calmness with vigilance, ready to react immediately to any signal of the spreader operator. The operator raises and lowers his wing to fit constant changes in track elevation. The edge of the wing must be kept just above the adjacent track. Looking back from the spreader, the core of snow between the tracks has been pushed onto the adjacent track for the following rotary to throw out. This is one of a fleet of six rotary snow plows which Southern Pacific operates on the mountain. Normally, 11 men are assigned to each unit, and the rotaries are kept in readiness 24 hours a day during the winter. The rotary snowplow is 12 feet wide and 13 feet high, and is pushed by a powerful locomotive. Some plows have wings that extend to the sides and allow them to cut an additional two feet of snow away from either side of the roadbed. The rotary normally follows the spreader during the cleanup. It can throw the snow out nearly 150 feet, completely beyond the adjacent clear track. During severe storms, the rotary plows are called into action early. They move constantly back and forth over the track, throwing out the mounting snow. During the cleanup, they throw out the snow the spreader has smoothed onto the track. And here is how the railroad looks after the rotary plow has passed and the snow was cleared away right down to the rails. Now here comes another workhorse of the snow fighting operation, the flanger. It has blades that dig down between the rails to throw out the snow. During light storm seasons, the flanger may be the only piece of snow fighting equipment called into action on the Sierra. The flanger's blades act on the snow similar to the way the plow of a ship knifes through water. The snow was pushed up and deflected to the side by the angle of the blades. Raising and lowering action is controlled by the engineer from the cab. The rear blade throws snow to the right, the front blade to the left, giving the engineer a choice of direction. Signs guide the engineer in raising the blades to prevent breaking them on switches or crossings. Measuring performance in miles, the flanger heads the list. It will keep the entire stretch of line open when the snow depth does not exceed three feet. A well-flanged track is a safeguard for train operations. According to the snow fighters, there's no greater thrill than to ride a flanger as it rolls along the track, throwing out a white plume of snow. This is the final result of all the effort that has been expended in keeping the line over the Sierra open to freight and passenger traffic. The 45 miles of railroad running through a white icy canyon, hewed by the men and the equipment of Southern Pacific, are snow freight. The rest of the Sierra may be covered with a heavy white blanket, but the trains are moving.
severest winters, Southern Pacific moves an average of 25,000 passenger cars and 225,000 freight cars over the Sierra Nevada summit. To make it possible during this record-breaking winter, the railroad removed over 2 million tons of snow from the tracks. storm season in the recorded history of the Sierra, the men of Southern Pacific met an operational challenge unsurpassed since the railroad was built. Winter threw every bad weather trick in the book at them. But in the end, it had to bow to the superiority of modern equipment and the railroading know-how of the rugged and tireless men of Southern Pacific. Men whose job it is to keep open this vital artery of our nation's lifeline.